Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a polynomial expression. So we are given x squared minus 4x equals negative 1. And for those x values, we're going to evaluate x cubed minus 15x. So we're going to find a numerical value from here uh, that must be given in the problem because otherwise uh, you could also get this in terms of x or something else. So let's get started. I'll be presenting three methods and let's start with the first one. And at the end, I'm going to show you a graph which kind of puts it all together. So for my first method, I'll be using brute force, almost as always, and find the x values. Let's put negative 1 on the left. Or I could probably do the following. Let's go ahead and keep it there and add 4 to both sides because I would like to complete the square. And now the left hand side becomes x minus 2 quantity squared. And there are two numbers whose square equals 3, and those numbers are plus minus root 3. And from here we get the x values as 2 plus minus root 3. I know the, the way I write the plus minus sign is not, um, you know, standard, but anyways. So th these are my x values, and I would like to evaluate x cubed minus 15x. But which x value am I going to use? That's a million dollar question, right? Yeah, well, I'm going to use both. How about that? Or maybe I can just use one and you can do the other. So let's go ahead and replace x with 2 plus root 3. Since it's positive, I would like to test that. So I'm going to cube this and subtract 15 times the same thing. Okay. How do you cube a plus b? There's many ways to do it. You know, the binomial theorem, the binomial theorem gives us something. And I want, I like this version of the binomial theorem. I, I want to write it as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab multiplied by a plus b. This kind of keeps it a little bit more organized. And to me, it seems a little easier and, you know, uh, more convenient. Anyways, 2 cubed is 8. Uh, root 3 cubed is 3 root 3. Plus 3ab is going to be 6 root 3 and then multiply it by 2 plus root 3. And... We can just distribute that, minus 30, minus 15, root 3. Let's go ahead and uh, simplify this uh, by combining like terms. So this is going to give us 6 times 3, which is 18. 8 plus 18 is 26. That was easy. This is going to give us 12 root 3. 3, plus, uh, 3 root 3 plus 12 root 3, so that's going to become 15 root 3. Uh-oh, they're going to cancel out. Of course, this has been arranged, right? Or in other words, contrived. So 15 root 3 cancels out, and that leaves us with 26 minus 30, which is equivalent to negative 4. So the value of x cubed minus 15x is negative 4 if x squared minus 4x plus uh, x squared minus 4x uh, equals negative 1. All right, great. So we used x equals 2 plus root 3. And what happens x, if x equals 2 minus root 3? Do we get the same answer? That's for you to test. Okay, so I'm going to leave that open and you can definitely test it out and see what happens and then just let me know. Let's talk about the second method now. For my second method, I'm going to be using something smarter than the first one because first one was kind of like, you know, standard approach or you could call that brute force. I'll do the following for the second method. I can, I'm going to isolate x squared and then uh, from here, I'll get x cubed. So I'm going to try to write x cubed in terms of x. So x cubed is x squared minus x. But I can go ahead and replace x squared with 4x minus 1. Then distribute. And then replace x squared with 4x minus 1. And which is something that you can keep doing, by the way. So you can pretty much get all the powers that are greater or equal to 3 in terms of x as a linear function. So from here we get x cubed equals 16x minus x, which is 15x minus 4. But remember, the problem was asking for the value of x cubed minus 15x, and it's not hard to see that it is going to be negative 4 from here. Notice that this doesn't depend on a particular x value, but we kind of solved it in the general sense, which kind of gives you a clue about what would happen if I replaced x with 2 minus root 3 using the first method. All right, you can definitely test it out and see what happens. Uh, this is basically the second method. As you can see, it's much faster and it's more polynomial. Let's go ahead and talk about the third method. 
my third method, you know, a lot of times I don't really do third method, the three methods, but polynomials sometimes allow you to use more than two methods. So for my third method, I'm going to let x cubed minus 15x equal k. And obviously, this gives us a cubic equation if you put everything on the same side. So remember, I'm trying to find the value of x cubed minus 15x, given that x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 1. So if I find the k value, then I get the answer, right? That's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the k value. Let's put everything on the same side and solve for k. But I don't really have anything um, to solve for k here because it's a cubic and, you know, I can't solve for k from here. So I need to use the other information. What was the other information? The other information was that x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 1. How about turning this into a polynomial like the first one? Let's add 1 to both sides. And obviously, this is an equation and it has two roots, x sub 1 and x sub 2, right? But guess what? x cubed minus 15x minus k equals 0 for the right k value if x squared minus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. So for those x1 and x2 values, this equation is also going to be true, which means x1 and x2 are solutions of that equation as well. But that is a cubic, and it has three solutions, hmm. which means that they are sharing these two solutions. In other words, from a polynomial perspective, we can safely say that x cubed minus 15x minus k must be must be or is divisible, divisible means no remainders, by x squared minus 4x plus 1. This is awesome. Why? Because we can do long division and find the value of k because the remainder will be 0. You don't need to do long division. If you want, you can do it, but I'm going to use a much smarter approach, which is something that I really like, and especially in this case, it's fairly easy to do. Look, if you know that this is divisible by that, like the cubic is divisible by the quadratic, the other factor must be linear, and that's going to be x plus something. Why did I say x instead of ax? Because the leading coefficients are 1 on both sides, so x must be there, plus something, right? But notice the constants are negative k on this side, and 1 and something else on this side. So the constant must be negative k. Awesome, beautiful, we got it. Let's go ahead and distribute. This is what I mean by the polynomial perspective. So we're kind of doing it the polynomial way. x cubed minus kx squared minus 4x squared plus 4kx plus x minus k. So I distribute everything and then set this equal to my cubic on the left-hand side because they're equal for all values of x. And here, let's put it together like, you know, combining like terms, so on and so forth. And now we have an equality. That's true for all values of x. But this implies that, this implies that, this number here must be 0 because there's no x squared on the right hand side. And the coefficient of x is negative 15. So this gives us a system. k equals negative 4 and k equals negative 4, which means k equals negative 4. And we were looking for k, so the answer is negative 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.